when are anti-lock brakes of most use to you? When you're braking gently. When you're braking on rural roads. When you're braking harshly. When you're braking on a motorway. Anti-lock brakes won't be needed when you're braking normally. Looking well down the road and anticipating possible hazards could prevent you from having to brake late and harshly. Knowing that you have anti-lock brakes isn't an excuse to drive in a careless or reckless way. Your mobile phone rings while you're travelling. What should you do? Stop immediately. Answer it immediately. Ignore it. Pull up at the nearest curb. It's illegal to use a handheld mobile or similar device when driving or riding, except in a genuine emergency. The safest option is to switch off your mobile phone before you set off and use a message service. If you've forgotten to switch your phone off and it rings, you should ignore it. When you've stopped in a safe place, you can see who called and return the call if necessary. You're on a motorway. There's a contraflow system ahead. What would you expect to find? Temporary traffic lights. Lower speed limits. Wider lanes than normal. Speed humps. When approaching a contraflow system, reduce speed in good time and obey all speed limits. You may be travelling in a narrower lane than normal, with no permanent barrier between you and the oncoming traffic. Be aware that the hard shoulder may be used for traffic, and the road ahead could be obstructed by slow-moving or broken-down vehicles. When you use the brakes, your vehicle pulls to one side. What should you do? Increase the pressure in your tyres. Have the brakes checked as soon as possible. Change gear and pump the brake pedal. Use your parking brake at the same time. The brakes on your vehicle must be effective and properly adjusted. If your vehicle pulls to one side when braking, take it to be checked by a qualified mechanic as soon as you can. What type of vehicle could you expect to meet in the middle of the road? Lorry? Bicycle? Car? Motorcycle? The highest point of the bridge is in the centre, so a large vehicle might have to move to the centre of the road to have enough room to pass under the bridge. Daytime visibility is poor, but not seriously reduced. Which lights should you switch on? Headlights and fog lights. Front fog lights. Dipped headlights. Rear fog lights. Only use your fog lights when visibility is seriously reduced. Use dipped headlights in poor conditions because this helps other road users to see you without the risk of causing dazzle. Where should you take particular care to look for motorcyclists and cyclists? On dual carriageways. At junctions. At zebra crossings. On one-way streets. Motorcyclists and cyclists are often more difficult to see at junctions, 
they're easily hidden from view and you may not be able to see them approaching a junction if your view is partially blocked, for example, by other traffic. Who has priority at an unmarked crossroads? The larger vehicle. No one has priority. The faster vehicle. The smaller vehicle. Practice good observation in all directions before you emerge or make a turn. Proceed only when you're sure it's safe to do so. At a pelican crossing, what must you do when the amber light is flashing? Stop and wait for the green light. Stop and wait for the red light. Give way to pedestrians waiting to cross. Give way to pedestrians already on the crossing. Pelican crossings are signal-controlled crossings operated by pedestrians. Push-button controls change the signals. Pelican crossings have no red and amber stage before green. Instead, they have a flashing amber light. This means you must give way to pedestrians who are already on the crossing. If the crossing is clear, however, you can continue. Which type of sign tells you not to do something? Signs in the shape of a circle give orders. A sign with a red circle means that you aren't allowed to do something. Study Know Your Traffic Signs to ensure that you understand what the different traffic signs mean. What should you do when you see two elderly pedestrians about to cross the road ahead? Expect them to wait for you to pass. Speed up to get past them quickly. Stop and wave them across the road. Be careful, they may misjudge your speed. Older people may have impaired hearing, vision, concentration and judgement. They may also walk slowly and so could take a long time to cross the road. What does this sign mean? Quayside or riverbank. Steep hill downwards. Uneven road surface. Road liable to flooding. You should be careful in these locations, as the road surface is likely to be wet and slippery. There may be a steep drop to the water, and there may not be a barrier along the edge of the road. You're driving towards a zebra crossing. A person in a wheelchair is waiting to cross. What should you do? Continue on your way. Wave to the person to cross. Wave to the person to wait. Be prepared to stop. You should slow down and be prepared to stop as you would for an able-bodied person. Don't wave them across as other traffic may not stop. What should you do when approaching this crossing? Prepare to slow down and stop. Stop and wave the pedestrians across. Speed up and pass by quickly. Continue unless the pedestrians step out. Be courteous and prepare to stop. Don't wave people across because this could be dangerous if another vehicle is approaching the crossing. Northern Ireland exempt. A new car will need its first MOT test when it's how old? One year. Three years. 
five years, seven years. The vehicle you drive must be roadworthy and in good condition. If it's over three years old, it must pass an MOT test to remain in use on the road, unless it's exempt from the MOT test. See gov.uk. What does this temporary sign indicate? The speed limit change at the end of the motorway. An advisory change of speed limit ahead. A variable speed limit ahead. A mandatory speed limit change ahead. In the interests of road safety, temporary mandatory speed limits are imposed at all major roadworks. Signs like this, giving advance warning of the speed limit, are normally placed about three quarters of a mile ahead of where the speed limit comes into force. What will reduce the risk of neck injury resulting from a collision? An air sprung seat, anti-lock brakes, a collapsible steering wheel, a properly adjusted head restraint. If you're involved in a collision, head restraints will reduce the risk of neck injury. They must be properly adjusted. Make sure they aren't positioned too low. In a crash, this could cause damage to the neck. You find that your eyesight has become very poor and your optician cannot help you. By law, who should you tell? The driver licensing authority. Your own doctor. The local police. Another optician. Having very poor eyesight will have a serious effect on your ability to drive safely. If you can't meet the driver's eyesight requirements, you must tell DVLA or DVA in Northern Ireland. You're following two cyclists. They approach a roundabout in the left-hand lane. In which direction should you expect the cyclist to go? Left, right, any direction, straight ahead. Cyclists approaching a roundabout in the left-hand lane may be turning right, but may not have been able to get into the correct lane due to heavy traffic. They may also feel safer keeping to the left all the way around the roundabout. Be aware of them and give them plenty of room. What does this sign mean? Multi-exit roundabout. Risk of ice. Six roads converge. Place of historical interest. It will take up to 10 times longer to stop when it's icy. Where there's a risk of icy conditions, you need to be aware of this and take extra care. If you think the road may be icy, don't brake or steer harshly as your tyres could lose their grip on the road. You're following a large vehicle approaching a crossroads. The driver signals to turn left. What should you do? Overtake if you can leave plenty of room. Overtake only if there are no oncoming vehicles. Don't overtake until the vehicle begins to turn. Don't overtake as you approach or at the junction. Hold back and wait until the vehicle has turned before proceeding. Don't overtake, because the vehicle turning left 
could hide a vehicle emerging from the same junction. You're towing a trailer on a motorway. What's the speed limit for a car towing a trailer on this road? 40 miles per hour. 50 miles per hour. 60 miles per hour. 70 miles per hour. Don't forget that you're towing a trailer. If you're towing a small, light trailer, it won't reduce your vehicle's performance by very much. However, strong winds or buffeting from large vehicles might cause the trailer to snake from side to side. Be aware of your speed and don't exceed the reduced speed limit imposed on vehicles towing trailers. You're about to drive home. You can't find the glasses you need to wear. What should you do? Drive home slowly, keeping to quiet roads. Borrow a friend's glasses and use those. Drive home at night so that the lights will help you. Find a way of getting home without driving. If you need to wear glasses for driving, it's illegal to drive without them. You must be able to see clearly when you're driving. When is it acceptable for a passenger to travel in a car without wearing a seatbelt? When they're under 14 years old. When they're under 1.5 metres, 5 feet in height. When they're sitting in the rear seat when they're exempt for medical reasons. If you have adult passengers, it's their responsibility to wear a seatbelt, but you should still remind them to use one as they get in the car. It's your responsibility to make sure that all children in your car are secured with an appropriate restraint. Exemptions are allowed for those with a medical exemption certificate. In which conditions should you leave at least a two-second gap between your vehicle and the one in front? Wet, dry, damp, foggy. In good, dry conditions, a driver needs to keep a distance of at least two seconds from the car in front. This should allow enough space for you to stop if the driver in front has to stop suddenly. What does this sign mean? Bus station on the right. Contraflow bus lane. Withflow bus lane. Give way to buses. There will also be markings on the road surface to indicate the bus lane. You mustn't use this lane for parking or overtaking. You're in the right-hand lane of a three-lane motorway. What do these overhead signs mean? Move to the left and reduce your speed to 50 miles per hour. There are roadworks 50 metres, 55 yards ahead. Use the hard shoulder until you've passed the hazard. Leave the motorway at the next exit. You must obey these signs, even if there appear to be no problems ahead. There could be queuing traffic or another hazard which you can't yet see. What should you do if you see a large box fall from a lorry onto the motorway? Go to the next emergency telephone and report the hazard. Catch up with the lorry and try to get the driver's attention. 
stop close to the box until the police arrive. Pull over to the hard shoulder, then remove the box. Lorry drivers can be unaware of objects falling from their vehicles. If you see something fall onto a motorway, look to see if the driver pulls over. If they don't stop, don't attempt to retrieve the object yourself. Pull onto the hard shoulder near an emergency telephone and report the hazard. You're on a motorway at night, with other vehicles just ahead of you. Which lights should you have on? Front fog lights. Main beam headlights. Side lights only. Dipped headlights. If you're driving behind other traffic on the motorway at night, use dipped headlights. Main beam headlights will dazzle the other drivers. Your headlights dipped beam should fall short of the vehicle in front. What should the driver of the grey car, arrowed, be especially aware of? The uneven road surface. Traffic following behind. Doors opening on parked cars. Empty parking spaces. When passing parked cars, there's a risk that a driver or passenger may not check before opening the door into the road. A defensive driver will drive slowly and be looking for people who may be about to get out of their car. After passing your driving test, you suffer from ill health. This affects your driving. What must you do? Inform your local police. Avoid using motorways. Always drive accompanied. Inform the licensing authority. You must tell DVLA or DVA in Northern Ireland if your health is likely to affect your ability to drive. The licensing authority will investigate your situation and then make a decision on whether or not to take away your license. Your vehicle is fitted with a handheld telephone. What should you do to use the phone? Reduce your speed. Find a safe place to stop. Steer the vehicle with one hand. Be particularly careful at junctions. Never attempt to use a handheld phone while you're driving, except in a genuine emergency. It's illegal and will take your attention away from driving, putting you at greater risk of causing a collision. You're following other vehicles in fog. You have your lights on. What else can you do to reduce the chances of being in a collision? Keep close to the vehicle in front. Use your main beam instead of dipped headlights. Keep up with the faster vehicles. Reduce your speed and increase the gap in front. When it's foggy, use dipped headlights. This will help you see and be seen by other road users. If visibility is seriously reduced, consider using front and rear fog lights if you have them. Keep to a sensible speed and don't follow the vehicle in front too closely. If the road is wet and slippery, you'll need to allow twice the normal stopping distance. You're following a lorry on a wet road. What should you do when spray makes it difficult to see the road ahead? Drop back until you can see better. Put your headlights on full beam. 
keep close to the lorry, away from the spray. Speed up and overtake quickly. Large vehicles throw up a lot of spray when it's wet. This makes it difficult for following drivers to see the road ahead. You'll be able to see more by dropping back further out of the spray. This will also increase your separation distance, giving you more room to stop if you have to. What should you use your horn for? To alert others to your presence? To allow you right of way? To greet other road users? To signal your annoyance? Your horn mustn't be used between 11.30pm and 7am in a built-up area or when you're stationary, unless a moving vehicle poses a danger. Its function is to alert other road users to your presence. In heavy motorway traffic, the vehicle behind you is following too closely. How can you lower the risk of a collision? Increase your distance from the vehicle in front. Brake sharply. Switch on your hazard warning lights. Move onto the hard shoulder and stop. On busy roads, traffic may still travel at high speeds despite being close together. Don't follow the vehicle in front too closely. If a driver behind seems to be pushing you, gradually increase your distance from the vehicle in front by slowing down gently. This will give you more space in front if you have to brake and will reduce the risk of a collision involving several vehicles. What can cause excessive or uneven tyre wear? A faulty gearbox? A faulty braking system? A faulty electrical system? A faulty exhaust system. If you see that parts of the tread on your tyres are wearing before others, it may indicate a brake, steering or suspension fault. Regular servicing will help to detect faults at an early stage, and this will avoid the risk of minor faults becoming serious or even dangerous. You're towing a small trailer on a busy three-lane motorway. What must you do if all the lanes are open? Not exceed 50 miles per hour. Not overtake. Have a stabiliser fitted. Use only the left hand and centre lanes. The motorway regulations for towing a trailer state that you mustn't use the right-hand lane of a three-lane motorway unless directed to do so, for example, at roadworks or due to a lane closure. Exceed 60 miles per hour. You're driving on a road that has a cycle lane. The lane is marked by a broken white line. What does this mean? You shouldn't drive in the lane unless it's unavoidable. There's a reduced speed limit for motor vehicles using the lane. Cyclists can travel in both directions in that lane. The lane must be used by motorcyclists in heavy traffic. Cycle lanes are marked with either a solid or a broken white line. If the line is solid, you should check the times of operation shown on the signs and not drive or park in the lane during those times. If the line is broken, you shouldn't drive or park in the lane unless it's unavoidable. You're in collision with another moving vehicle. Someone is injured 
and your vehicle is damaged. What information should you find out? Whether the other driver is licensed to drive, the other driver's name, address and telephone number, the destination of the other driver, the occupation of the other driver. Try to keep calm and don't rush. Make sure that you've shared all the relevant details with the other driver before you leave the scene. If possible, take pictures and note the positions of all the vehicles involved. Which sign means no motor vehicles allowed? This sign is used to enable pedestrians to walk free from traffic. It's often found in shopping areas. You've broken down on a motorway. In which direction should you walk to find the nearest emergency telephone? With the traffic flow. Facing oncoming traffic. In the direction shown on the marker posts. In the direction of the nearest exit. Along the hard shoulder, there are marker posts at 100 meter intervals. These will direct you to the nearest emergency telephone. What's the main hazard the driver of the red car arrowed should be aware of? Glare from the sun may affect the driver's vision. The black car may stop suddenly. The bus may move out into the road. Oncoming vehicles will assume the driver is turning right. If you can do so safely, give way to buses signalling to move off at bus stops. Try to anticipate the actions of other road users around you. The driver of the red car should be prepared for the bus pulling out. As you approach a bus stop, look to see how many passengers are waiting to board. If the last one has just got on, the bus is likely to move off. You're on a two-lane dual carriageway. Why would you use the right-hand lane? To overtake slower traffic. For normal progress. When staying at the minimum allowed speed. To keep driving at a constant high speed. Normally, you should travel in the left-hand lane and only use the right-hand lane for overtaking or turning right. Move back into the left lane as soon as it's safe, but don't cut in across the path of the vehicle you've just passed. How will a roof rack affect your car's performance? There will be less wind noise. The engine will use more oil. The car will accelerate faster. Fuel consumption will increase. A roof rack increases your car's wind resistance. This will cause an increase in fuel consumption, so you should remove it when it isn't being used. An aerodynamically designed roof rack or box will help reduce wind resistance to a minimum but the rack or box should still be removed when it isn't in use. What should you do when a person herding sheep asks you to stop? Ignore them as they have no authority. Stop and switch off your engine. Continue on but drive slowly. Try to get past quickly.
If someone in charge of animals asks you to stop, you should do so and switch off your engine. Animals are unpredictable and startle easily. They could turn and run into your path or into the path of another moving vehicle. You see a horse rider as you approach a roundabout. What should you do if they're signalling right but keeping well to the left? Proceed as normal. Keep close to them. Cut in front of them. Stay well back. Allow the horse rider to enter and exit the roundabout in their own time. They may feel safer keeping to the left all the way around the roundabout. Don't get up close behind or alongside them because that would probably upset the horse and create a dangerous situation. You're driving a vehicle that has anti-lock brakes. How should you apply the foot brake when you need to stop in an emergency? Slowly and gently. Slowly but firmly. Rapidly and gently. Rapidly and firmly. You may have to stop in an emergency due to a misjudgment by another driver or a hazard arising suddenly such as a child running out into the road. If your vehicle has anti-lock brakes, you should apply the brakes immediately and keep them firmly applied until you stop. You've broken down on a motorway. When you use the emergency telephone, what will you be asked for? Details about your vehicle. Your driving license details. The name of your vehicle's insurance company. Your employer's details. Have the correct details ready before you use the emergency telephone. The operator will need to know the details of your vehicle and its fault. For your own safety, always face the traffic when you speak on a roadside telephone. You're travelling along a street with parked vehicles on the left-hand side. Why should you keep your speed down? So that oncoming traffic can see you more clearly? You may set off car alarms. There may be delivery lorries on the street. Children may run out from between the vehicles. Travel slowly and carefully near parked vehicles. Beware of vehicles pulling out, especially bicycles and motorcycles. Pedestrians, especially children, who may run out from between cars. Drivers opening their doors.